They're going to be getting hungry, and it's going to be, they probably look at a sundial, not, not a good day. Uh, they're going to be getting hungry, so somebody's got to give them something to eat. And Jesus says, you know, to the disciples, to his followers, you give them something to eat. And when they agree to join Jesus in this endeavor, there is plenty for everyone, and there are leftovers besides. What an amazing story. What an amazing lesson to us. Reminding me of a story that I had come upon years ago, and we used to get a little magazine called Monday Morning, and it was a Presbyterian minister's magazine. We started getting it in seminary, and it was the best magazine because it had just little snippets and quips and little reflections by pastors, and the idea was that you would sit down and write these things on Monday morning, you know, after your, your uh, biggest day of the week was done. Well, they don't publish that anymore, which I think it's a real shame. But in this, this magazine, so this had to be like 20 years ago probably, there was a story that had been submitted by someone who worked as a hunger action enabler. I used to have those in the PCUSA. And this person told this story. There's a story of a little girl who was not more than 10 or 11 years old who was standing in the soup kitchen line in a poverty-stricken stricken section of a large city. Uh, I was able to find this story on the internet. This isn't exactly the version that I remember, so if some of the details don't quite jive, that's why. But because I remember that it was in, uh, in South America somewhere. But anyway, she was the last one in this long line of people waiting to be fed. Uh, there were actually more people had shown up that day than usual, more than had been expected. And the volunteers who were preparing and serving the food that day realized that the food was starting to run short. And any go, has that ever happened at Martha's Kitchen, where you, there's, all of a sudden there's a lot more people than you thought they had any meat? And so you start to worry, and they were starting to worry, and what were they going to do? And the little girl was in line, and she wasn't paying any attention. Uh, her attention, instead of looking at the front of the line, she was looking at three small children who were over uh, sort of on the side of the road, and they were sitting and waiting for her in the shade. And the little girl continued to wait in line that day, but uh, kept looking over them and waving, making sure they were okay. And when she finally made it up to the servers, the only thing left was one banana. And the uh, person giving out the food was sort of stricken as she looked at this one little girl and all they had left to give her was a banana. But the little girl smiled, said thank you, took the banana and skipped off across the street. And she um, went over to and rejoined the three smaller children. And the person writing it wondered who these children were. We don't know who they were, but uh, the little girl went to them with the banana, and carefully unpeeled the banana, and broke it into three pieces, and gave a piece to each of the three children waiting. And then she sat down on the curb, and she licked the inside of the banana peel. And the person who submitted the story wrote, when I saw what that little girl did that day, I saw the face of God. In her mind, there was enough because those who she loved had been taken care of. And she got, what did she get? A sweet treat, perhaps, a lick of the banana, but no, mostly she got the pleasure and the joy of knowing that those she loved were provided for. And I believe that's how God relates to us. I think that's the, one of the messages of this story. Jesus looked with compassion that line is in there, on the crowds that were there. He knew they were hungry. He knew what they needed. And so he provided. That's what our metaphor of the Lord's Supper is all about. We come to the table, we talk about coming to the table hungry and being fed. We don't get a meal here, obviously. This isn't like one of our potlucks where the tables are overflowing. That's what I should have had a picture of on the cover. We come to the table and there are very simple elements of bread and cup. But we come knowing that with those simple elements, God is able to feed us, to fill us, to give us what we need to go out into the world to be disciples of Jesus Christ. There's a hymn in our hymn book that we're not going to sing because I hesitated to try a new hymn when Ed wasn't here. It's great to have our, our guest organist here today. Um,
So I thought, well, I'm just going to read it because it's actually the lyrics are wonderful. And then when we do sing it, some other time when we have to, maybe you'll, you'll sing it more robustly, having heard the lyrics. But it's it's called "Loaves Were Broken, Words Were Spoken." Loaves were broken, words were spoken by the Galilean shore. Jesus, bread of life from heaven, was their food forevermore. By your body broken for us, by your wine of life outpoured, Jesus, feed again your people. Be our host, our life, our Lord. Loaves were broken, words were spoken in a quiet room one night. In the bread and wine you gave them, Christ you came as light from light. Loaves are broken, words are spoken, as in faith we gather here. Jesus speaks across the ages, I am with you, do not fear. By the loaves you break and give us, send us in your name to share bread for which the millions hunger, words that tell your love and care. By your body broken for us, by your wine of life outpouring, Jesus, feed again your people, be our host, our life, our Lord. And this we pray in Jesus' name. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. This time we'll uh, take advantage of the opportunity that not only do we receive the feeding of the Lord at the Lord's table, but uh, we are able to be those who do the feeding through the ministries and mission of this church. And so we'll ask that our ushers would please come forward and receive our morning tithes and offerings.
being built in your image, we share that characteristic. So bless these givings from our generosity, that they might be multiplied out in your great realm, and that people near and far would be fed. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Other, other blessings. 
I, I would just like to, as a blessing and a prayer concern, I would like to say what a blessing it is to have George Blackney here as our guest organist. Thank you for being here. And uh, of course, Ed is gone, and Ed is, he goes so much, he's all over the place, but I think he was going to a family reunion, is why he was down in the shopping. And he was supposed to play the organ at, at his home church this morning. But he got a call from the young pastor last night that he has a, a, a physical problem and he could not preach. And so he asked uh, Ed to preach. So uh, I think we need to pray for Ed this morning, who is, who is not only preaching, but also doing the music. So uh, he was saying he doesn't like to double, do double duty like that. But when called upon, uh, Ed, as we know, is a, is a good servant of the Lord. And so he's doing that. So remember Ed in prayer this morning. And for those might not be aware. Ed is a, a certified lay preacher for the United Methodist Church. So uh, he's got some uh, some history and some credentials. But uh, 7 o'clock last night, that's uh, that's a little late in the game. Uh, so I'll wait for somebody say anything. Uh, I'm very grateful because I, I, I uh, came out with just a broken arm. And I'm also very grateful the writer brought me Mary Jane Sling, Pastor Mary Jane Sling. I have some soup waiting from Nancy, and I have my daughter who's been taking such good care of me. So, lots of blessings. Well, it's nice that you could put these in the blessing category yeah. because it's a, uh, we were so concerned to hear that Enrico had taken a significant fall, which could have been a, a critical kind of a fall. Uh, but um, a blessing to us that you're here today and that uh, God has mended you even as we speak. Uh, we have some other uh, uh, prayer concerns that we want to make sure we get out of the table. We continue to pray for Merle Van Besten, uh, for Ginny Redder, for Carol Lashaway's daughter, Ian Santino, and Tammy Schnitzer's father-in-law, along with uh, Eniko. Uh, other joys or concerns uh, that we want to lift up in our communion prayers if not, then let us come before the Lord with our communion prayers. Let us pray. O great and holy God, we open our hearts in praise and thanksgiving. You alone are holy. You are our great creator. And here in the, in the heart of the summer harvest season, how aware we are of that. We count among our blessings the the joys of summertime fun, students still out of school, the splash of a swimming pool, the taste of a ripe peach, sweet corn off the top, friendships, friendly gatherings, all the, the personal ways that through our relationships one with another, our lives are richer and sweeter. And in a unique way, they are so here at this church. And so our hearts overflow with gratitude for this marvelous creation and this marvelous church family. And so with all the saints and all the angels of all the ages, we lift our song of praise to you as we offer our sanctuary.
number in our hearts and spirits the ways in which you are abundant, one thing stands out. The fact that you offered your very self to us, the great gift overflowing, the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lived among us, who ministered in the hillsides of Galilee, who broke bread and fed thousands and broke it in an upper room and fed a very select, smaller group. Lord, we're so grateful that though he was though he was killed by people he loved, you raised him up from death. You raised him to be victor over death, victor and ruler of life, the church, the people of God, and our personal hearts. And how grateful we are that he still breaks bread with his faithful people. So be with us now in this breaking of the bread, that what we say would be your word, and what we do would be your deed through the blessings of your Holy Spirit. And we seal all these prayers with the prayer that he taught our, uh, all followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this
Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Cut off from me, you can do nothing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Let's pray together. God our God, we thank you for this supper, share this spirit with your Son Jesus, who makes us new and strong.